Uh, you find yourself walking down the main street. You try to remember what you were doing, how you got there, but the memory proves elusive as ever. You glance around and though there are lights on the street and in the buildings, it still seems darker than it should be. Looking upward, you can barely make out the stars overhead, though that could be explained by the ambient city lights. Is anyone out there? Is there anybody listening? Is there anyone who sees what's going on? You only get silence in response. You continue to move forward without purpose. The city is quiet as a grave. Yeah. Chuckles. The clown. You turn around at the strange laughter and see another person at the end of the street. You try to make out any features, but like before, it is swathed in shadows. Dark shadows. Barnabas Collins. I have to say, I've gotten more amusement out of your pitiful flailing than I ever expected. Who are you? Why are you doing this to me? Who am I? Why, I'm just someone looking out for your well-being. <laughs> Cut the cryptic bullcrap. Tut tut, there is no need for unseemly vulgarity. Oh, tut tut, he's a mummy. We are civilized people here, well, at least I am, so let us behave as such. However, in response to your first question... Yes. I am who I am. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. Toot toot. Don't go trying to play Odysseus. I would have gone with the Popeye joke, but hey, Odysseus. Yeah, classic literature. Aye. There were others. If you're thinking searching for others with the same affliction, if you're thinking searching for others, yeah, don't think of it, just thinking it. It will do you no good. Those who came before you are now gone. Your name is Bob. No, you have to say it in reverse. Your name is Bob. Damn it. Never. Mm. Or at least you thought you said never, but at the same time it sounded like an inarticulate growl. You, shum you shamble forward once more. Shumble? Yeah. M. Night Shumble on. Once more when you feel a sharp pain in the bottom of your foot. Looking down, you see that you've stepped on a board, obscured by the darkness, and one with a nail sticking straight up. I think I made the joke last time that that was the same uh, board with a nail in it that stopped uh, Kang and Kodos. So you're convinced this is a dream. Maybe so, maybe so. However, I would like you to consider one thing. There's an old saying about dreams. You know, if you happen to die in a dream, you die in real life. Nothing says it has to be immediate, now does it? Okay, so we're clearly not in Springwood. And with that, the shadowy figure turns around and starts walking away, a spring in his step. A spring? Oh, maybe we are in Springwood. Is this Elm Street? Try to give chase, remove the board from your foot, try to wake up. Throw the chairman off the board. Got it. You let the shadowy man leave, more concerned with getting the board off. See, that was a mistake. If you couldn't really walk well, then what you had to do was find another board with another nail in it and step on that, and then you could have skied after him. <laughs> run, flop, run, flop. <laughs> now, you get, you, get, you get two boards with nails in them, you step on them, make them skis, and then you grab, like, uh, I don't know, a couple of canes or golf clubs or something, and you just do cross-country. You let the shadowy man leave, more concerned with getting the board off. One thing is for sure, you can't do it while standing. Oh, even better, skateboards with a nail in them. <laughs> that would be perfect. Just, just you know, Tony Hawk your way around. <laughs> um, Misfit, are you sure about that? I mean, you know, it's been making about as much sense. And Whimper. You open your eyes and see that you're in your room. The Lennox Penguin is still there to uh, comfort you. Nick is giving a slight whine, and when you look at the end of your bed, there appears to be something wrong with your right foot. While it's hard to tell what it is, you detect the smell of blood in the air. Rubbing your hand on the foot, though, you don't feel anything untoward, even if the foot is very tender. And delicious. And good with steak sauce. Your eyelids feel very heavy. You blink several times, but the energy just drives you further into drowsiness. Blackness ascends as you decide to rest up before exercising your eyes again. And our stress keeps going up. To die, to sleep, to sleep, or chance to dream, just as you're about to pass out, you remember that you can never stay awake thinking of, of Shakespeare. Okay. And we saw this. Um, well, we said vintage last time, so what do we want to say this time? See if she's a Jimi Hendrix fan? Have you ever been experienced? 
I, I always want to imagine that when Jimi Hendrix was trying to find a uh, person to play in the band, he sat down with them, looked over their resume, and said, I see you're applying for the job of bass player. Are you now, or have you ever been experienced? I'm going to need to check your references. And he sets the resume on fire and... I would call you experienced, and you know what they say. No, what do they say? That you're a slut. Experience is the best teacher. Blushes. Oh, I'm hot for teacher, so... Ashley wraps up what she is doing and quickly washes her hands off, though clean. You can still detect the hint of spilled dirt, like an open grave. Playful mood. It's either that or wallow. And... Lips against yours, short but sweet kiss. You've been seeing other monsters. Frisky. Guilty. Uh, something came up. Stuff happens. Made the day go better. Nothing supernatural. Dry, yes, dryads at Home Depot. Uh, I had to shit in the soil. Um, someone's interested in your condition. Uh, what do they want to look at your condition? I just said that, bitch. Caster's listening. I'm not gonna turn traitor. You're in control of yourself, but you won't be as soon as we leave this scene. If, uh, this doesn't work, be rampaging up and down the street and put a bow on your head. Uh, good hollow point. Uh, caster could snoop on you. So we're listening in. Why even mention it at all? Also, uh, they might, but not likely. I start sniffing. When do we get to meet? I tried to make it sooner. So, can I give you a hand with anything? Riot of colors, which I still like as a phrase. Uh, what is your favorite flower? Um, uh, do we stick with red rose again? Because that, that did get us a point with her last time. I don't know what the actual answer is. Like, the, the thing with this part... Generally speaking, if you um, advance in um, the... If you get, like, a plus one in one of the rankings, I generally take that to be the quote-unquote right answer. But I don't think there's any... Well, there may be penalties for certain answers, but then again, I don't really know. I honestly don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll throw in my advice if you want it, you know, for what it's worth. It's probably best sticking with Red Rose, because we know we actually got some uh, points out of that. So maybe that might help things a bit. And this time around with uh, the, lower, uh, the lower workload, that might help things. That might, that might do something with it. Okay. I think it's the first uh, alignment points we've uh, scored with Ashley. There is no right or wrong answer. I just went. I just went on a uh, a short dissertation as to why there probably is a right or wrong answer. Okay, we made it. This worked. Okay, that is good. We lowered it just in... Whoa, we did it, we cut it close, though. Holy shit, look how close we cost this. Okay. I think it's very clear what we have to do. Unless it does it for itself, we're going to have to chop off another job. And, uh, which means losing Sabrina. And... 
I think we're going to need to do two dates because then we'll get the stress level down to like 42%. It's minus 25 stress. Yeah, like, like, like this is actually good because it'll get our energy um, back up. Did we give a gift to Tyrone? I don't, I don't remember if we actually gave him anything. And I'm pretty sure we didn't give a gift to uh, Nadia. Because we, we eliminated her pretty fast. Alright, so what do you think, folks? I, I can I can tell you this for sure. If we go into week six with that level of stress, we're dead in the water. Smaller date. At least one date. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the date first, then. Okay. Select the place for the date and click Confirm to continue. Uh, beach, movies, clubbing, amusement park. We got the money for whatever. It doesn't seem to, at least to, to me, that any variation on the stress reduction happens between these. I think we just picked the wrong movie, is all. Okay, amusement park it is. Activities. Play carnival games, eat cotton candy, ride roller coaster, ride bumper cars. So, who are we going to take? So, okay, so even though Ashley got excluded from, you know, who we stopped talking to, we apparently can date her. I mean, no one's going to happen if we take Ashley to the amusement park. She's just going to spend all, all the time chasing balloons around. Uh, Kitten, yeah, yeah, I was about to say, Kitten, I'm pretty sure I know who you're going for. Okay, Raku. Victor it is. Now, that ought to be amusing if lightning strikes him while he's on the roller coaster. Suddenly, Final Destination 3. Quite all right. Okay. Now what do we do? Play carnival games, eat cotton candy, ride roller coaster, ride bumper cars. <laughs> okay, I just realized something. Two of those things work on electricity. I'm, I'm I'm having a vision of like going on the roller coaster and Victor somehow shorts it out and they end up stuck up there for three hours. Yeah, that's like in Hoonie Pop actually. Um, um, Iko, the uh, teacher, if you take her to the uh, or if you when you go to the amusement park, you don't really get an option where to take her, but. Um, her quote is, let's go lose some rigged games. And Nikki, the um, the gamer girl, uh, if you go to the carnival, it's like, let's go win some stupid stuff. I've got these games figured out. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't stress us. Carnival games. That great hit on the Wii. Upon paying the Barker money, Victor stood quietly, getting a glazed look on his face while, when making mental calculations. People were starting to get irritated when he finally threw the ball, which promptly disappeared. A second later, it reappeared, knocking down cans. Victor simply grinned as he said, they always forget to consider the fourth dimension. <laughs> wow. And our social alignment went up nice. That is awesome. We we have a we have a boyfriend who can bend space and time. <laughs> that could come in handy on some occasions for things I can't think of immediately. I think that would be more nerd skills. <laughs> I know it seems rather petty, but 
you know, fuck it. Uh, okay, so we've already been on a date this week, so we can't do that. Um, do we want to buy a gift, or do we want to do, if you, if anything, I'd say the spa. Spa. Okay. Yeah, we'll have plenty of time to buy gifts after we don't murder everybody. Okay, we have much less stress. Uh, we have somehow more than extra amounts of energy. Yeah, seriously. We actually are going into this week with less stress than we had in the previous week. So I don't think we need to cut anything down. Um, let me go ahead and put a save in here. Okay, so knowing that we are uh, going to live to see another week, and so are some several other people, uh, I think that is a good place to pause. So I'm going to uh, stop here, and uh, we will resume uh, Love Bites in the next session. So uh, always remember, keep your stress to a minimum, because, you know, your, your low stress can help save a life. Until we game again. We have lived to see the start of another week, but it's going to be a week full of uncertainty, I'm pretty sure. Welcome back to Love Bites. And we are at just under half stress, but it's a lot better than we were in the previous week. And we've also started to make some inroads towards figuring out you know, what is going on and maybe some way around it. At the same time, we also have a very complicated love life right now because uh, we have our true beau, uh, Victor. We have our um, friendly werewolf beau, um, Ashley. And we have our stepsister beau, uh, Sabrina. And eventually, something's going to come to a head. So I get the feeling that uh, we actually did um, Nadia and uh, Tyrone a favor earlier. But at any rate, uh, let's see. I think we are probably okay where we are. I think it might actually be... Yeah, we're just getting energy back from uh, relaxing. We're not getting um, any stress down. Yeah, I think we're probably good where we are. So unless anyone has any objections, I'm going to go ahead and continue from here. And, you know, yeah, a good, uh, a good uh, puff of the chronic would uh, go a long way to uh, helping Caitlin out here, I'm pretty sure. But I don't know if they make uh, medical marijuana for uh, monsterdom. Uh, all right, here we go. Monday. You wait with great trepidation in the doctor's office. You glance at the wall and see the doctor is running about 15 minutes behind. But that isn't so unusual, especially if another patient required extra attention. You notice one poster on the wall showing the various muscles and layers of skin in the human of the human body, and unexpectedly you find saliva slowly increasing in your mouth and feel a faint echo of hunger in your stomach. And you eat the poster and are unsatisfied. You shake your head and go back to waiting patiently. A few more minutes pass when you hear a knock on the door and someone enters. She is looking at a small laptop, then puts it down as she approaches you. Hi. Uh, good morning, Caitlin, was it? Uh, have you seen my larger tuxedo jacket? Unless someone used whiteout on my birth certificate. Jade gives a slight smile and takes a seat opposite you. I'm sorry your normal family doctor is not here, but he went on vacation. Smart man. That's all right. So what brings you in today? I think something is wrong with me. Why don't you tell me about it while I take your vitals? Jade takes a stethoscope from a nearby drawer and, and starts to listen to your various body processes while you talk. I, lo I love how we're just like uh, body processes. We're not even narrowing it down. We're like start dating now. We're taking the job first. 
yeah, next thing we see, she's doing brain surgery and they're, you know, whispering sweet nothings into each other's ear through the masks. Oh, boy. I've been incredibly tired lately. Trouble sleeping? That's the thing, I've been sleeping longer than normal, but it doesn't seem to help. Oh, oh, gee, cry me a river, lady. Hmm, okay, anything else? My appetite has been weird. While you try to add more detail about your diet, you're briefly interrupted by the doctor. That's weird. That's what she said. The doctor takes the stethoscope and gives it a couple tentative taps. Did I just make a that's what she said joke and not, not really about a sexual thing? Wow. That's a, I think that's the first time in the world that happened. Damn. Momentous occasion. Something wrong? Yeah, this thing is defective. I couldn't hear your heartbeat for at least half a minute, full minute. Anyways, beside your appetite and sleep patterns, is anything else happening? Yeah, my, heart, my heart's slowing down. Mention the dreams, mention occasional weird cravings, say nothing more, feeling the doctor can't help. Yeah, I mean, the doctor hasn't even offered you a job in this whole time you've been talking to her. <laughs> yes, it appears this stethoscope is dead. Hook her up to an EKG, finds uh, similar results, and then, you know, is like, well, this is dead, throws it out the window. Alright, tell her about the dreams. Dreams. Well, that's what dreams are made of. Doctor, my life is changing every day in every possible way. Oh, wrong dreams. You start to talk about some of the dreams and nightmares you've experienced lately. The doctor bites her lips and gives you a lip and gives you a slight nod as you wind down. It is possible your sleep habits are inducing these dreams, although there can be some other cause. Is there anything I can do? Bullet to the head. Try to eliminate as much stress as possible. We did that! I could have told you that! Caitlin, just you could have just come to me. I would have told you that without having to waste money on a copay. Uh, while we look at other causes. So is there something you can do to help me? Um, yeah, you want to go out? I'm afraid we're going to have to run a few tests and then go from there. First, I'll need to get blood and urine samples. All right. Show me the fire hydrant. Oh, that's someone else. Grr. You feel a slight jerk on your arm as you play tug-of-war with your dog. His jaws are holding one end of a stick while you hold the other. After a few more minutes, Nick lets go and the stick hits you in the forehead. Monk. Hey, You did that on purpose, didn't you? Apparently. Nick dances around at your feet, tail whapping haggily. Whapping? <laughs> tail whapping. Tail whapping haggily. Tail wagging happily as he wants to continue playing. For the moment, your presence doesn't seem to be putting him off. Okay, okay, here you go. You lift the stick waist high and you get in, and get in the stance to toss it. Chuck the stick, hide the stick behind your back. <laughs> wow, the most the most pivotal choice yet. This, this one's truly for all the marbles. Chuck the stick. Or we can play a uh, really bad game and chuck rock. Chuck the stick. You give the stick a long time. Yeah, yeah, we, we be a dick to the dog. Uh, Nick's stress level uh, goes over 100% and uh, he goes on a rampage. You give the stick a long toss and it lands in a pile of bushes. Nick furiously charges after it, scaring a couple of birds who immediately take to the skies. From behind you, remind me never to get between him and his supper dish. And also, if there was a stick in the air, why didn't she go for it? <laughs> it doesn't take him long to wolf it down. Mm. Sorry, just to turn a phrase. Nick pads back to you and freezes when he is about five feet away. He drops the stick, protectively lying down over it. But kick. You tap your thigh, gesturing for Nick to come towards you, but he keeps maintaining his distance. At least he's well trained. 
Well, he, well, there's there's a bigger bitch in proximity. Yeah. When he was a puppy, he would sometimes get loose. It was cheaper to train him than pay the fines. So what are you doing out here? Oh, I was just taking a jog when I spotted you. I've been mulling something over my head. Are you seeing someone else? Oh, boy. Shit about get real. Now, I mentioned Hooney Pop before. I really do like it. Unfortunately, I can't play it on Twitch because it's a banned game. But um, one of the, char the characters asked um, a question. It's like, you're not seeing anyone else right now, are you? And you're, you're trying to, you know, get laid with a whole bunch of women at once. So, like, one of the answers you can give her, which is actually the right one, is like, I'm dating a whole plethora of women right now. And you say that, she's like, <laughs> you wish. But but you actually get credit for it because you're being totally honest. At least I believe so. But Anyway, not exactly. So what is the deal between you and Victor? Are you seeing each other? It's sort of complicated. Well, tell me, why'd you have to go and make things so that? I don't know. I couldn't help but notice how your heart skipped a beat when I said his name. Her heart's skipping a beat no matter what happens. Ashley, at least yours skips as well when you say my name. Again. Skips all the time. I have AFib, I know what that's like, but I don't have it that bad. Is it wrong that I wish I was the only girl to make you blush? What do you mean? I mean, dump that Sabrina bitch, you know? I can be your girl and Victor can be your guy. I'm down with that. I've spawned you and Sabrina together. You're a lot more friendly than I initially thought. Then why did she ask about Victor? Please don't start a fight with her. I didn't plan on it. For one thing, I know she carries a silver dagger on her. Biting her lip. Look, I really don't want to create a scene. We could take this someplace more private. No thanks, I'd rather just get this out of the way. I think it's obvious I'm serious about you, but am, but am as important to you. If not, then better to break it off now. Oh boy. Stay with her, separate from her. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, pretty much. I wish it hadn't, because this would have more impact. It, it, it would definitely hit a lot harder if we didn't know it. So what do we do? I can only assume that if we stay with Ashley, then it's probably going to end the romance lines with both Sabrina and Victor, but I don't know, because I've never done this. Yeah, I, I this is this is not me being coy. I really can't say because I I truly don't know. So, you all you all call it. Okay, so is that so? Are you saying separate? Final answer. Okay, one vote for separate. Separate it is. I'm sorry, Ashley. I got to uh, let you off the leash. Uh, we're going to send you to a nice farm in upstate New York where you can uh, run through the fields to your heart's content. Broken heart. Your choices made you break up. Made you break up, Ashley. You you broke up, Ashley. As soon as you said it, like she shattered into a thousand pieces and you had to put her back together like a jigsaw puzzle. Well, I think it is best for us to split up. You weren't really together in the first place, but I thought that was what you were going to say. We can still be friends. I don't know. I, I don't usually want to tear the head off my friends. Oh boy. Ashley walks away, sparing a final glance at you and leaves the park. Welp. This episode's Lonely Wolf was made possible by Mike Panza, 
Rick and Baltimore, Viceroy Scorn, D.I.O.D., Jumpy Cat, Shin Majin, the post-production contributions of Matthew Carr Anderson, and all my marking new territory Lycanthro fans. Thank you very much for your continued support. Until we game again.